We're just about ready now to begin Act Two, but before we do, we want you to meet our storyteller for Act Two. Actually, you've already met him. He was the uh, mayor who turned on the lights for that electric Christmas tree, and uh, he was the robot master of ceremonies. His name is Reagan Courtney, and he's the only professional actor in the cast. Reagan's an author, a poet, a songwriter, and a drama teacher, and he's been with Pageant for the past 13 years. We have a camera back in his dressing room right now. Let's go back and uh, listen in. Why are we doing this long pageant? I've asked myself that every year for 14 years. I don't know. Well, I do know why. We're doing this because we want to tell the whole story. You know, we start way back a long time ago when we were doing prophecy, and we talk about the prophecy, and then we talk about uh, angels, and we talk about sheep, lots of sheep. You wouldn't believe the sheep, whole flocks of sheep, a few goats thrown in for spice. I tell you, and it gets pretty uh, <laughs> aromatic around there. And then after the sheep, we got the wise men coming in. We got your wise men with your gold, your frankincense and your myrrh. And they come in with all of their big fancy group of people in their fancy costumes. And that's the end of the Christmas story, but that's not the end of the story. And so we decided a long time ago to tell the whole story. And we tell the part about Jesus' ministry, and we tell about the uh, crucifixion, and the burial and the resurrection. And that's why I come down here and spend two weeks away from my family, putting this goop on my face, fixing up my hair with a perm, putting on this beautiful costume and playing like. I'm 46 years old, I'm still playing like. You know, play like I'm Superman and play like you're, you know, whatever. So we're gonna play like. I'm gonna play like I'm another person. I'm going to pretend that I am your father. My name shall be Joseph of Arimathea, you, Benjamin, and Ephraim. And we shall go from this place together and tell the amazing story, my sons. Come now, let us go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. Now, Act Two of the most amazing story. Presented without commercial interruption. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. My name is Joseph. I come from the town of Arimathea, and when I am not tending to my business, are spending time with my family. I am searching the scriptures, trying to find some word of the Messiah. He no, he wasn't. He was a Hebrew. Yes, he One, was. Bo boys, one moment, please. This is like Cain and Abel. Now, what is the matter here? Ephraim says that Moses was an Egyptian, but in school the rabbi has taught us that he was a Hebrew. I see. Well, let's let's examine this a little bit, Ephraim. Tell me. Why do you think Moses was an Egyptian? When Moses was just a baby, the Egyptians were so afraid of the power and strength of the Hebrew people that they killed all the newborn baby boys. But his mother put him in a basket behind the bulrushes on the banks of the Nile. Pharaoh's daughter found him and brought him up as her son. So wouldn't that make him an Egyptian? That makes you very smart. It makes me very proud, and I kiss you on top of your curly head. Mwah. 
It also makes you very wrong. Moses was brought up by an Egyptian princess, that is true. But he was by birth Hebrew. And you cannot change your birthright so easily, come. And I'll tell you some more about this amazing man, Moses. See, he was very rich, very educated, powerful. Why, he might have been the next Pharaoh, except Providence saw to it that he spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness where he learned of his true mission. But Egypt, where he grew up, was a rich and powerful nation where they had gold and silver and alabaster in every household. A visiting king once said there was as much gold in Egypt as there was sand. Now, 400 years before Moses, the Egyptians welcomed the Hebrews with open arms. But in that 400-year time, they became slaves to the Pharaoh and had to do everything he decreed. <laughs> were very cruel taskmasters. They bound the Hebrew slaves together and made them build their public monuments and their tombs. They treated them like animals. They beat them into submission. Sometimes they even beat them to death. The day finally came when Moses learned who his real people were, and he grew to hate the Egyptians' wealth. One day as he visited a construction site, he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave. He had seen this many times before, but somehow it was different. And when the Egyptian drew his knife, Moses, in a rage, killed the Egyptian dead. Now, he was a very smart man. He knew that in Egypt, you cannot murder an Egyptian and survive, and so he fled. He went to Midian across the Red Sea. No longer did he live in the Pharaoh's palace, a powerful prince. No, he lived in the tent in a desert. No longer did he wear princely robes. No, he wore the humble mantle of a shepherd. Yes, the Prince Moses became a shepherd Moses. And he guided his sheep, looking for pasture land. One day, as he was guiding his sheep, looking for pasture land, he saw a very strange sight. There was a bush, and it was burning. But it wasn't burned up, just burning. And he heard a voice, and it said, Moses, take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. And Moses said, Who art thou, Lord? And the voice said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I've heard the cries of my people in Egypt, and I want you to go and let them lead them to freedom. Moses said, Whom shall I say has sent me? And the voice said, Say, I am, hath sent you. Now listen to me carefully. God revealed to Moses his ancient and holy name, a name so holy we dare not take it in vain and speak it aloud only with great reverence and fear. That name was Yahweh. God spoke to other prophets in dreams and visions, but he spoke to Moses person to person.